Hello again, everyone. Conius here. Today I'm flying from Lubbock, Texas to Abilene, Texas, flying a Beechcraft 350i King Air. I have not set up autopilot yet, so let's do that now. I'm going to set a flight level of, let's say, 7,500 feet. It's a little hard to read, and I overshot. the heading, pre-turn the navigation on, we'll engage autopilot once we're up in the air. Alright, let's get going. rudder is very twitchy on this plane. I need to reduce my pedal sensitivity. It's hard to keep it going perfectly straight. I might just use the stick rudder. Uh, it's not really helping much. Once I clear the airport and get some altitude, I will turn towards our heading. KH3, two three, continue for east departure. I will contact you next when you leave my airspace. Flaps up. Lava Tower KH3, continue for east departure. essentially on course. We're not exactly where we're supposed to be, so I will continue going north until those magenta lines converge on the compass. I'm trying to be mindful of angle of ascent. We're not gaining a lot of speed yet, but I believe that's just because we're climbing so much. Let me go ahead and start turning in the direction of our heading. KH3, 23, you are leaving my airspace frequency change approved. Lubbock Tower, KH3, 23, frequency change. Lubbock Approach, KH3, 23, is type Beechcraft King Air Tree, miles southeast of Lubbock, 5,100 feet. Request clearance to transition Charlie airspace. Okay, so we're on course. Going to engage autopilot. Squawk 5336 KH323. Can. Here we go. KH323 radar contact four right. miles south. So that should take care of keeping us on heading. Maintain on navigation. Airspace Plan to go needs to come up. That's one of the reasons we're not getting much speed. And then what is this warning here? Oh right, yellow damper. Let's turn that on. Okay. Southwest two two six contact MT Earth Center on one three two decimal six. I'm also going to engage flight level change because we do want to be up at 7500. 132.6 Keeping an eye on these engine dials and engages. I have a tendency to push the engine too hard and get those up into the red, which is obviously a problem. Check the barometer. Yeah, that was quite a ways off.
Alright, I believe we have switched to altitude hold mode now. Let's check. Yes, holding at 7500. Autopilot with yaw dampening. Don't know what that stands for. Alright, we're at a good speed. The plane feels solid, rigid. One thing I would like to do is turn up the brightness on the avionics. Those are a little hard to see. Alright, that's better. Alright, I think we're done with everything that we need to do inside here. So let's go outside and take a look. Grab my 360 controller. Alright, just seems like a nice, solid, stable flight. This is real-time, real weather. It's probably, uh, let's see, it's around 10 Pacific Standard Time where I'm at. It's probably 11 here in Texas. Tremendous amount of flat agricultural land, as well as that default awful looking texture that it's in all over the place, especially Thank you what we saw it coming into Lubbock. Request flight following. K-323, Lubbock approach. Walk 0226. Yeah, it's kind of amazing just as far as the eye can see, it's agricultural patches. Way off into the distance. We have a while to go. Maybe I'll use the drone and see how far it really goes. So well, let me reset this position. Switch to the drone. Set the speed up. We'll stay connected to the plane. Let me turn my eye towards the direction I wanted to go in, and let's head off. So the question is, how far does this really go? So the drone is going faster than plane speed. It doesn't seem like it, but it is. Uh, it might be a while before we actually get past any of this. So this might be a failed experiment. It may just go, I don't know, on forever. Um, it'll seem like we're going faster if I drop down. And of course I can switch back to the plane. We're going too fast. So let me pull back on the engine. We go just a little bit below the center detent. And I'll come back and check that in a minute. Go back to the drone. I think this is the direction I was going in. Yeah, I was trying to go to the left of the plane. Yep. So another way I could perform this experiment would be to go up and see what I see. Looks like some kind of a break over here. I don't know if that's... don't really know what that is. Maybe mountains or something. Everything looks really blue, I guess from the haze just looks super, super blue. I wonder what that black spot is. I guess it's a pond or something. Let's just go back and check on the plane. Engine speed's fine. Flaps are up. Autopilot's in control. Still holding a steady altitude. B to adjust the barometer. It needed it. Okay, let's go back to control.
for some reason I'm intrigued by bodies of water, I'm not really sure why, but anyway, they're an interesting thing to explore on the landscape. The drone will go sit on the water surface if you want. I also see a settlement over there, I don't know what that is, that might be interesting to check out. And then if I let off the control, the plane is dragging us along. So we're never too far from the plane. Alright, so just some kind of weird, I don't know, body of water here in the middle of agricultural land. Maybe it's uh, an accidental lake. Uh, maybe it's for irrigation. Who knows? Ooh, wow. Okay, so that's what happens when the plane's dragging us along. So let me get down to the water surface and we'll see what that looks like. You know, we're being dragged along <laughs> through the ground. That's funny. Alright, some kind of roads down there. Sometimes the roads cut right through the f middle of these fields, which seems strange. I assume it's an AI, you know, artifact of some kind. I wouldn't expect it to cut right through like that. Could be a mismatch in data. Alright, so now we've got the combined speed of the drone and the plane pulling us along. Let's see, what is this over here? Quite a large settlement here. I don't have a map up, so I can't tell what it actually is. Anyway, uh, just a lot of kind of boring looking houses. I'm surprised I'm not seeing a golf course out here somewhere. More of these, I don't know, accidental lakes or something. Uh, this one's quite got quite a polygon shape to it. Interesting. So does this one. That's very strange. Low resolution data, I guess. K-8-3-2-3 hey, contact NC Ward Center on 127 decimal Alright, let's go back and check out the plane. Going to 127 decimal 45 KH-3-2-3. FTA Ward Center KH-3-2-3-7500 feet. Let's get to a nice KH3 overview. KH3 Center, continue as planned. Altimeter tree zero decimal five two. Go back outside, switch back to the drone. So I don't know if there's anything else to see around here. Would be nice if they had something other than this awful default texture that shows up everywhere across southwestern US. It's just ugly nasty. Looks like vomit. <laughs> FT Worth Center exit Jeff 417 is at flight level 345 descending 10,000 feet. Another more exit legitimate body of water FT over here. Continue as planned. I guess that must be a creek. Looks like water. Yeah. Oh, yeah, look at that reflection. That's really pretty. Uh, this lake has an island. That's interesting. And then I guess those are roadways and whatnot. Circular driveway. But, um, yeah, an island. That's not to be expected. Wow, that's really pretty. Alright, well I'm going to head back to the plane, hit 5 on the numpad, and reset that view. Switch to the external view. Do a little bit of looking around here. Again, that awful default southwestern texture. Looks like it goes on forever.
going right along just fine. Uh, check on the barometer. A little bit of a change there. Reset the internal view. Let's go back outside for a minute. I really do like this particular default paint job. I'd like to find a reputable livery mega pack to download that's not cheating and using other people's work. But I haven't found that yet. I do like the idea though of flying planes that are styled with corporate logos. I think that'd be a lot of fun. So at this point in the flight, there's not much to do. You could read or eat your lunch, talk to the passengers, karaoke, I guess, mile-high karaoke. The main thing is just keep an eye on the engine and altitude. Make sure autopilot is working properly. The, um, the flight is nice and clean and stable. I am liking this plane. It's taken me a while to get used to it. It's a little twitchy, but I am really liking it. I still need a lot of work on landings. I'm having a lot of trouble with smooth landings. I'm not damaging the planes, but they're a little bumpy, a little crazy at the last minute. Rolling too much. So, um, anyway, that's what I'm working on. back inside for a minute. I'm still curious what some of these controls do. So that's all calm, navigation, automatic direction finding, HF. Inoperative. And that's interesting because I wonder if you take a trans-specific flight where you have to use HF, does it do the uh, avionics, I mean, does the communications change to HF? Does it stay on VHF? It can't. <laughs> so that's something we'll have to try. Uh, MKR, audio signal of markers, beacon. Huh, okay. <laughs> Might be interesting to turn it on sometime and see what that's all about. Audio something. Both. Doesn't do anything. Engine auto ignition. So. I haven't started one of these up from cold yet, but I think you will use those. That's to turning off the whole plane. You certainly don't want to do that right now. I don't know if, if it would actually do that. I assume it would. It'd be pretty catastrophic, obviously. Um, what else do we have here? Feather. Yeah, I don't know what the feathering is. You see that over here, too. I'll have to look up and find out what that is. I am a learn-as-you-go digital pilot. I'm not planning to take any flight lessons, although I do feel like I could benefit from some information on how the wind works in certain situations. Landing, small hills, that kind of thing. Sometimes I get surprised. Prop sync inoperative, okay. Display reversion, that probably puts those back into a default simple mode. say inoperative, but I don't want to click it. Lights, fluid sensor test, okay, landing gear, that's the fuse. That must be pilot heat, I guess. Uh, brake de-icing, interesting. Oh no, actually, I think that's uh, de-icing the um, airspeed sensor. 
by a lot of ice related stuff. That's not that something I had to deal with yet. I think it's all set to automatic. Um, but I would like to try that sometime. Gear horn silence, okay. Interesting, because it looks like you can control the throttles independently, but that uh, seems like a pretty scary thing to do unless one of the engines is having a problem. Um, you can see the plane gingerly adjusting the pitch trim. Fuel cut off, I suppose if I want to create a problem one of these days I'll turn that on. Well, of course that one's it inoperative. setting cursor and touch modes for these guys. I haven't really used those. I don't think it's the G1000, I think it's G3000. I haven't used those much. I don't have a lot of experience with them. Okay, heat is inoperative. Temperature. Can I turn the temperature up? I wonder. Nope. A lot of stuff's inoperative. I wish at least everything did something. Um, I guess the flight hours are just since I last chose the plane. I guess if I stick with it, I'll be able to see that increase. I think it also means that if I'm accumulating any damage with rough landings, I'm going to keep it on the next flight. That's an assumption. Um, Back to my point about everything ought to work. I mean, seriously, you should be able to pop a fuse out and cause a problem, right? Because a fuse could go out. <laughs> so they could make, you know, everything at least do something. That looks like an emergency door opening or something. It certainly looks like you're not supposed to press that. Uh, what would that do? Looks kind of scary. Is there one on this side? No. Or maybe it's behind the seat. Let's see. If I move, maybe I can I look behind the seat. Yeah, there's another one back there. I guess maybe it's a engine kill switch. Temperature outside is nice. I haven't played with any of the fuel related stuff yet. Don't really know what I'm doing there. More fuses. Boy, there's fuses everywhere. Again, they could be made to work. Look up what feathering is. Uh, mixture. That's something I don't know how to do. I don't know how to do prop RPM control stuff. I assume it has to do with prop pitch. <laughs> anyway, let's, let's reset the view. And I'm going to go back outside. Okay, well, we're getting more of the agricultural kind of land going. Stop for a while. Just a big flat open space. In a way, I do kind of wish that it was thunder and lightning. I could have turned that on, but not right now. I've got to set the to there won't let me do it. Okay, we're going to arrive at the airport pretty soon. The airport is at 1,750 feet, so we're probably going to want to be a couple thousand above that. So we're going to say 4,000. So I'm going to begin a descent down to 4,500 at first. Reset the external view, go inside. 
Okay, I can see that, 7500, so let's drop that down. So that's a target, it's not going to change anything yet until we engage it. So there's 4500. Um, we're descending, so I just need to set flight level control on. <laughs> and then once I drop thrust, the plane will make up the speed by descending. And I don't necessarily want to descend too quickly. Barometer again. It seems like the pressure is changing a lot as we go along. All right. Well, this seems like a nice steady descent down to 4,500. Go look outside for a minute. Yeah, you can sort of feel the plane dropping in altitude. See it bobbing up and down a little bit as the autopilot adjusts. United one four one two contact MT. We're at center on one two seven decimal four five. Just admiring those reflections in the paint.
looks like another aircraft going by up here. Abilene approach KH-323. Request clearance to transition Charlie airspace. Alright, so we are continuously dropping in speed, which is fine with me. At some point I will pick it back up. But we're getting very close to the airport. see much from this angle. Um. Okay, I don't see the landing pattern yet, but the airport's at 1750, we're at 37, so we should be good. It's usually a couple thousand feet high. I am going to go ahead and take over from autopilot. The wind is calm, and so the last trim the autopilot had set is actually working for us. Okay, I'm going to up thrust. We're dropping a little bit. More than I would like, so. Abilene Tower just a little bit of extra, is one, one excess speed in case we need it. To land. Generic for Alpha Golf, contact Abilene departure on one two five decimal zero. KH three two three Abilene Tower. Enter left base runway one seven left. Altimeter three zero decimal four eight wind zero five four at one niner. Just trying to get us back onto perfect course. Enter left base runway one seven left KH three two three. Alright, I believe the pattern entry has shown One, two, five, decimal, zero, generic, I can't really go. see it. Let's dip down a bit and see where that is. Alright, so... I see the entrance. I think it's close to us right there. Okay, so we're going too fast at this point. Drop throttle. Put the flaps halfway down. Push on the stick. Ooh, a little bumpy. A little twitchy. Oh, we're not supposed to have the flaps out, I guess, going that fast. It's the white line where the flaps are appropriate, so that's my fault. I put those on too soon. Looks like a very densely populated area. Runway 17 left. Wind 054 at 19er. Plane does feel very runway 17 left. KH323. 
still going way too fast for flaps. All right, landing gear. Yes. All right, I'm gonna put the flap down all the way. That should get us slowing down. Drop the throttle a bit more. Can I drop it anymore? No, it's kind of already at the bottom. We're gonna need some thrust, and so I'm gonna start pushing it back up a little bit. Landing pattern has turned blue, so it means that it's happy with our speed. It's still difficult for me to tell exactly where the entrance is. But I'll head over in that direction, towards the flag. Okay, we're dropping too fast in speed, so let me uh, thrust up. We do not want to get into that red zone on the ticker, ticker tape. The speed seems to be just fine, though. It's at the low end. Okay, so it looks like I just need to go up here and turn left into the pattern and then circulate around to the right. I think that's going to work. In the past I would have been outside flying at this point, but I'm trying to extend my learning by getting more comfortable, f you know, piloting from inside where you can't really tell how close you are to the ground, and your visibility is very reduced. Alright, we're going too fast again. It's because I'm dropping in altitude. Let's see. That landing pattern is still kind of hard to tell where I'm supposed to go if I do this. Okay, I see it now. Alright, so I think we're at the right altitude. I just need to turn into it. I'm going to down thrust a bit because we are going too fast. One thing about landing a plane, it's you need patience. It's going to take a while to get there, it's going to take a while to go down through the descent angle, but we'll get there. Okay, try not to <laughs> rise too much in altitude until I know where I need to be. Uh, we're almost at the landing pattern. I think again we're, that we're okay. Altitude-wise, I'm going to give it some more thrust. I don't want to get too close to the bottom end of that range, white line. All right, I'm going to begin turning into the pattern entry. As best as I can tell where it is. The plane feels very twitchy, but I'm getting used to it. Just have to make smaller adjustments. Um, I'm used to using both hands on the stick when I'm doing a landing. That tends to help avoid too many bad micro-corrections. Right, so we need to turn some more. Our speed looks okay. We're dropping. I'll just keep an eye on it. As we go, it'll be important to be closer and closer down to that bottom edge. Just really have to keep an eye on that airspeed. It's the only thing keeping you afloat is that airspeed. <coughs> Alright, I'm going to drop thrust a bit because we're starting to speed up. We'll burn off some of the speed in the turn. Looks like we have to turn twice, that's fine, that'll help burn off some excess speed. I feel like we're doing okay. Wind is nice and calm, so that 
not complicating things. Just it's really hard to not make the plane bop a lot with just a tiny little change on the elevator. But that, that is the nature of aircraft. And I think we'll drop some more speed coming around this last turn, although I really do want to down throttle some more. And we're starting to gain altitude, but it's getting a little crazy. Okay. Just starting to gain altitude. I don't want to do that, so let's keep it down. Down thrust some more. Speed down, try not to stress the plane out too much with these hard turns. Honestly, don't know how much, if any, it's getting stressed out. I do have engine and plane stress turned on, but obviously we're still flying. It does seem like when I have those turned on... Okay, we're starting to speed up too much here. It does seem like the planes... Uh, work less reliably over time, like as if they're accumulating damage. I don't know if that's true or not, but it seems like it's the case. I think you can just reset it by going into your hangar and changing aircraft and then changing back. That'll probably reset the, the flying hours and all that. All right, we're thrusting too slow. We need to get that up. Dropping too quickly, but we do need to be dropping. Do not need to be. Tower, generic, November, 2236, whiskey, and runway, do not need to be gaining any altitude. Oh. Okay, this is getting a little nutty. It always feels generic, a little November, crazy on the ground. Whiskey, hold short runway, one, seven, left. This plane Traffic especially just feels crappy, very twitchy crappy, when you get close to the ground. The 172 and the 208s that I was flying didn't seem quite as twitchy. You've got to thrust this up. We're dropping too quickly. Don't want to land short. Hold short runway, 17 left, generic 36 whiskey. Alright, so here is a runway. I'm going to drop throttle all the way and then try to nose up and stay afloat. I think we're going too fast. Alright, well, we landed. It's not so bad. I mean, we went off the runway, Generic but November, two, two, three, six, it doesn't seem like the plane got any damage, which would be the main concern. Going to one, two, one seven K H three, two, three. And we'll get off right here. Flaps up. Cleared for takeoff runway one seven left. Generic November two, two, three, All right, and we'll stop and yeah, contact ground. That's the parking brake notice. Alright, so tower, uh, ground, request taxi to parking. Abilene ground, KH323, request taxi to parking. KH323 taxi to general aviation parking, by attacks away Bravo Echo. Alright, here we go. Taxiing to general aviation parking using taxiway Bravo Echo KH323. I don't know if there's a way to tell if there's stress accumulated on the plane, it'd be nice. I'd like to know if rough landings like that are, you know, creating cracks or something. Okay, so my from my experience landing in Lubbock, the plane really likes to go fast on the tarmac and you have to constantly be Slowing it down. There goes another aircraft taking off. I wonder if that's a player. Maybe it's AI stuff. Not having as much trouble this time with the taxiing. Let's give it some thrust. Felt like we were coming into that landing too fast, but on the other hand, it was right down at the bottom of the flap, you know, speed range. And so I think, I think it was probably okay. We bounced a little bit, it wasn't too bad, it didn't sound like a cr crashy kind of bounce, just a normal kind of landing bounce. So I think we're okay. I need to 
create a profile for these Thrustmaster pedals and do something less sensitive. It's really hard to use these on this plane. Oh, why are we going up? Oh, shoot. I'm not meaning to go up. Alright, this is not what I meant to do. I wasn't paying attention to the throttle when we started to take off. Let's see if we can go back and get in our pattern here. Alright, going too fast. This road seems super bumpy. That's kind of surprising. Whoa, what does this look like outside? Yeah, it's bumpy. Interesting. Okay. You'd expect it to be flat, right? Something just beeped. I'm not sure what. I guess I'm supposed to park here, maybe? It's kind of hard to tell. Just trying to thrust a little bit more to get those, those flashlights to get closer together. There we go. Alright, that's going to be good enough. That's the parking brake. Turn off the engines. Through their lengthy cooldown procedure. There they go. Welcome to Abilene, Texas. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video.